Hello everyone, my name is Gabriel Dixon and this is my video lab report for Project 1. For this lab, we will take a look at Newton's first and second laws in action, track an object moving at constant velocity using tracker software, and use computer programs to predict the future position of an object when given certain parameters. First, we will take a look at Newton's second law. Newton's second law relates the forces acting on an object, its mass, and the initial velocity of an object to determine its final velocity using the equation final velocity equals initial velocity plus the forces acting on the object divided by its mass times delta t. For lab one, we focus on an object moving at a constant rate. This brings us to Newton's first law, or the law of inertia. Newton's first law states that an object will move at a constant velocity as long as there are no unbalanced forces acting upon it. In other words, an object will move at a constant velocity as long as the net forces acting upon the object are equal to zero. This assumption that the net force acting upon our object is zero is very important for our computer model, which we will see in a moment. With both of these concepts in mind, we can actually predict the future position of an object using the equation final position equals initial position plus velocity times delta t. Now let's take a look at the models of both the observed and predicted position of our object with a constant velocity. To map the observed position of our object, we use the tracker software. For my object, I used a soup can rolling across a table at a constant velocity. As you can see, I set my axis so that my can was rolling in the negative x direction along the flat surface. Using the first and second time and position values of my object, we were able to calculate an initial velocity for my object. With the vectors 0, 0, 0 at time 0 seconds and the vector negative 0 0.023117 0, 0 at time 0 0.033 seconds, I calculated my initial velocity as negative 0 0.693570 0, 0 meters per second. Using the constant velocity we found on the previous slide, as well as our assumption of zero net force on an object in question, we can create a program that will help us predict the future position of an object. Using GlowScript, we can edit the starter code for this project to create a program that will give us reliable position data for our object moving at a constant velocity. The first things in need of revision are the initial conditions for our code. This object's in mass in kilograms was changed to 0.889 to reflect the mass of my soup can. Next, we need to change the velocity of the can. Here, we can substitute in the initial velocity found using our observed positions. The next thing we need to revise is the calculation loop so that it more closely resembles Newton's second law. We ran this loop between the times of 0 and 0.5 seconds. Next, we chose to set the net forces on the object equal to 0. This must be true if our object is traveling at a constant velocity. After this, we updated the velocity of the ball at each time step in that range using the equations for Newton's second law. However, because the forces acting on the ball were equal to 0, the velocity is never altered, hence the term constant velocity that we've been using. Finally, we update the position of the ball using the equation we saw earlier. Now we can finally take a look at our observed and our expected positions for our object and compare them by plotting them on the same graph. As we can see, the predicted position we found using our program is a very good predictor of the motion of our object. It is in step with the observed position nearly the entire time. There are slight differences between the observed position and our predicted positions, but these could be due to human error when tracking using the tracker software, or even the fact that our object does not move perfectly straight over its run. That said, our program is a good indicator of future positions when it comes to an object moving at constant velocity. After looking at the graphical representation of our data, one question we might ask is, what if we change the axis along which our object moves? While using Tracker, I set my axis so that my object moved to the left along the x-axis in the negative x direction. This also gave me a negative velocity with a value only in the x component of my vector. But what if I rotated my video so that the object moved in the positive x direction, or even along the y-axis? Let's take a look. In graph 1, we see what our object would look like still moving along the x-axis, but now towards the positive x-direction. The velocity for this movement is the same as our original graph, except for the fact that it is now a positive velocity. In graphs 2 and 3, we see what our object would look like moving along the y-axis. One of the biggest differences is the velocity vector. In these two graphs, only the y component of the vector has a value. The sign of the y value in the vector depends on if the object is moving in the positive y or negative y direction. Despite the sign and the arrangement of the vectors, one thing is true for all of them. All of the velocity vectors for every graph has the same magnitude. Finally, we're going to talk about the main forces acting upon our rolling object. The main forces acting against our rolling object after we've pushed it are gravity and friction. Those are both acting against our force that propels our object forward. To a much lesser extent, there is also probably some air resistance acting against our object. Gravity and air resistance act in the positive x direction, while gravity works in the negative y direction. In conclusion, we can use computer models to very accurately predict the position of an object in the future. There are many ways to illustrate this movement of an object moving at constant velocity. The computer models we use and the illustrations they provide give us an easy way to predict complex motions with relative ease.